Look, it's an exciting day for us today, our first anniversary of ISO King, which... Uh, <laughs> so Jeremy, I caught up with you last year during COVID, and you told me about ISO Kings, um, which is sort of like a... We're talking about people pivoting during the uh, COVID period, but you, I don't <laughs> see this as a pivot. But one of the things that came out of it was that um, you actually had the opportunity to create a brand new business. Mm. So you've now got what you wish for. Uh, you've got a brand new business, but you've also got the other business, which is the Stage King business. Mm. So what do you do in those environments? When you, are you conflicted? Uh, um, do you just throw more resources at both of them? What do you do? Because obviously I think King's going really well. You've got a lot, mm -hmm. a lot of equity here now, a lot of, a lot of IP, et cetera. Mm. Spent the time, done the hard yards. Now what? Yeah, well, I, I got to say, we didn't really wish for it to start with. It was, um, it was uh, done out of necessity. You know, we, uh, Mick, Mick and I were, were here one day and uh, said, what, what are we going to do? <laughs> what are we going to do here? We're to, and, and Tab. Um, and so the desk was what, what we thought would save us and get, at least keep a few of us busy. And, and, and it certainly did that. Uh, in 12 months now, we've done 35,000 pieces. So like you say, we've, we've built quite a brand there. And, that's where the, we came to the crossroads a couple of months ago and the decision was it had to be made whether we continue with ISO King uh, as Stage King comes back uh, or whether we wind it up. And, and look, the brand equity we've, we've had in it is such that we had to give it a go. And so Mick got to the drawing board and uh, has designed up this new stuff behind us here, which we think is spectacular. And uh, we're going to we, we're getting more and more advice is, is, the, is the answer. We, we currently we're under the Stage King's business, uh, but ISO King now we've rebranded as its own uh, brand. And uh, the, start of, the start of a sort of a cheeky thing, ISO King. It was. You, you're going from <laughs> you know, Stage King to ISO King. That was like a cheeky sort of smart ass hmm. kick at um, COVID, but now it's actually become a brand in itself. It has, yeah. And, and a lot of people have asked us, are you going to keep the name ISO now, when, now that ISO is done? And my answer was, we, we, we're because of ISO. Is, that's where mm. we've come from and it's the reason we, we are. And so we, uh, we're going to keep the name ISO King. We, we like it. We're attached to it. And, um, it's got a good story behind it. It's got a great story behind it. And ISO is also a quality standard. So it's... Uh, yeah, you know. I, that's right. I never <laughs> thought of it that way. It is, it yeah. is too. It yeah. is too. So like, yeah, um, I, I do want to talk about this, um, let's call it range. I feel like I'm at a fashion show or something. <laughs> range. And, and by the way, your stuff is fashion to some extent. Mm. It's mm. classic and fa fashion, but um, I do want to talk about the spe specificity of why you've got these slats and all that sort of stuff. Mm. But do you care to share how you came about this idea? Yeah. Well, it was, it was we just on the Friday after the public gathering ban on the 13th of March, Friday the 13th. <laughs> we'll try again. We'll try Siri. again, Siri. <laughs> so we, Friday the 13th of March is when, when the entertainment industry shut down and 90% and of the people here are from the entertainment industry. So we, everyone was hit really hard. And uh, Mick and I were, were in Melbourne and, and starting to work through anything we could think of to try and get, get things going. We, were that you trust, panicking? We panicked, yeah, yeah, we did. Um, uh, Tabitha and I uh, sat around that night and said, uh, you know, this could be it. And uh, I rang mum and said, we might be up in Harvey Bay with you before long, you know, so. And so the Love truss, you. yeah. <laughs> yeah, so we looked at the truss here. We looked at how we could build uh, pop-up testing facilities and all these things we, we, we found around the world. And it was a conversation I was having with a, a guy in Ireland that actually worked for us here for a little while. And he said, look, you guys have got a router. We're in the same position over here and we're thinking about making a desk. And so I messaged Mick and I just said, what, what do you think of this idea? And Mick jumped on it. And um, he, he is a genius, it really. We're so lucky that we've got Mick here and he designed the first desk uh, that we've just been looking at and the stand-up desk. And that's how it, was, that's how it started. We, he, we came in and we, we made those two desks and people liked but it. But you, you met the mark though. We, we did, we, all, we saw that there was a, we really saw there was a chink in the supply chain. You know, we, we were having, people telling us that they couldn't get a desk. Officeworks was out, Ikea was sold out. Uh, fantastic furniture was a 20 week lead time. And so there was no, there was no desk on the market. And, and so it was the right time, the right product. It was a four piece desk that slots together. You can put it away at the end of the day if you had to. So whole industries of people were now working from home. 
and they had an option. What inspired you then to get into like the full fuller range, the, mm. the, the more full range here, like, like like that's behind us? It was pretty cool. Yeah, we're we're really happy with it, and and everything along the way has all been really through community led innovation. We've been calling it. Yeah, we we gained quite a following uh, through the initial conversations we had with in through social media and people told us what they wanted you know people wrote and said oh we need a shoe rack can you make a shoe rack and and so we did that and a puzzle board and a wine rack and all these things that people asked for a lot of the people here made recommendations and suggestions and we just made what we thought would work and uh and then we got to that crossroads and we'd been selling all that 35,000 pieces and it's what do we do with iso king to take it to the next level to to, to compete with the other suppliers on the market and, and become an actual proper furniture company and the home range is how we thought we could do it. As a start? As a start, it's a lot, lot more to go. So you want to take me through it? Yeah, so absolutely. Like, so what are we, what's so, special about it though? Uh, in, not just in terms of no, no need for tools and you can put it together mm -hmm. yourself. By the way, I bought IKEA many, many years ago and I reckon it's an absolute punish because putting screws in and like, especially, you know, like you end up with extra stuff. So how have you dealt with that? Didn't you make your own stand-up desk at the start of COVID? Didn't no. You no right. Yeah, I did, I did, I did, I did. did. <laughs> and you know what? The girl I made up who's my girlfriend, like uh, my partner. So what I, I, she said to me the other day, she said, I hate the top of it. So I actually went and bought some um, nice finished um, pine oh, yeah. and I've just estipulated it. And uh, I'm, that's why I asked you what's the size Bring of your Bring it desk. down for fab. Yeah, Because <laughs> totally. I thought to myself, <laughs> if that's uh, 1100, that's exactly the si size of the one I just made. There you go. Well, what a waste of time. <laughs> <laughs> for me. Um, I don't even remember the question. Sorry. So, <laughs> so what, what is special about that's right. what you're, you've done here in terms of your design? The, the first thing is that the, the no tools that you, that you mentioned. The second thing is I, we, we looked at everything on the market. And there's a lot of people do do timber beds and, and, and very similar looking things. So Mick, uh, Mick thought we'd take it to another level. So we've taken it up a notch with the slats and, and this the, the, the bed behind us here with the multiple slats. I've never seen anything like it on the market. Mm -hmm. and, and I really think uh, that it's something a bit different and a bit well, special. It looks, I'm going to say complicated. It, it looks well, it's, it has a lot of design in it when you look mm. at it from here. I mean, but there's probably, I don't know, 20, 30 pieces. It's all, you've done all the work. Mm -hmm. All I have to do if I, if I buy this I have to, is just put, put it together. Mm. I've got to put a mattress on top. But like the way you've designed it as opposed to some of the other stuff, it's just like there's one board, another board, another board. So the, the stuff that I've seen that you can buy like this is boring. That's, and that's exactly it. And it's the same with everything we've done. A lot of people asked us for a cat towel back in the day, and we could have made a cat towel for 50 bucks, but we didn't want to make something you can buy at Ikea, at Ikea or at Aldi or something cheap. So for us, it was about making something special that's got that wow factor and, and you know, can, can compete with, these, with, with other designers. Price, and really, price, price, how have you priced it? The, the price is, actually, is, is quite good. So it's not, it's not an Ikea uh, off the shelf uh, number, but we're sort of, sort of in between those. So it's, I'd say it's a mid-range Yeah, so, price. but how do you, and, and are you, do you feel confident that that, that market exists, those people exist for, to demand this stuff? We are very confident. We, we've we've done a lot of research in, and yeah. in, in, in who's buying what and and the and the numbers of things that people are buying. And I think this mid-range, simple, and that's the thing too. It's very simple. People that are moving and renting, they can flat pack it, move it to the next house, and that's, they've got that's their room. Yeah, 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 yeah. They can yeah. they can actually move it themselves. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So you, you put pull it apart. That just, back of a ute and yeah, you've got it okay. at the next place. That's very clever actually because mm. a big issue is moving. It's a punish. It's a punish. You know, like for people who do move a lot. Absolutely, yeah. And, and there's a lot of a lot of people moving from places at the moment that, because, you know, I've got apartments, etc., which I rent out and we're finding that a lot of people just decide, not, not the ones you know about, but another, other apartments where people just said, oh, stuff it, I'll stay where I am because I can't be bothered paying the couple of thousand dollars again that cost me to move it and I just can put my rent up. Mm. Yeah, which, I mean, because no, they Perfect. work out quickly, the extra 50 bucks a week rent, they're going to chew that up in moving costs anyway. Yeah. So yeah, they might as well stay. Yeah, yeah. Well, this, the, the idea was simplicity. It's, it's simplicity and function and the look of it's always been the key to it. And, um, and I'll let Mick talk more to the design element uh, later, but uh, he doesn't know that. Um, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> the... Uh, the, the simplicity, and we're also, you know, down the track, I, what I can see is, is another range that's lower down, maybe for emergency housing or pop-up housing. You know, guys that have just been flooded out that need to move into a container house or something. Where we can have can sort of a... They can store between uses. Yeah, yeah that's right. That's that makes right. sense. Mm. Uh, yeah, or, or for, like, I've got a, another place, like a little retreat that I own, 
that, I, that gets a rented out retreat. And we're always getting some, sometimes we might get 30 people want to stay there, but we don't have, but you wouldn't have 30 beds permanently. Uh, yeah. So you might say, I would, I mean, I could put that stuff in my shed. Yeah. And I could easily yeah. put another 20 beds out or 15 beds out. Four level bunks. Yeah, totally. Something like that. For sure. Yeah. yeah. That, that, that's smart. That's clever. Mm -hmm. Like if you go up to where my retreat's up Byron Bay area, if you go up that way, everybody up there has a house on Airbnb. Yeah. yeah everyone. And, uh, but they might have a three bedroom house with three, three, be three double beds for argument's sake. But ten people might want to stay there. That you can say, yeah. look, you can say that. Look, if you there's three beds, there's six people. If you want another four. There's two hundred fifty dollars extra person. Mm -hmm. each, but, but you've got to give them stuff. So, I think I think the world has changed. Yeah. So there is now a demand for this sort of um, ready to use bedding furniture, mm. this sort of stuff, mm. where you can flat pack it. Yeah, and it doesn't take flat much pack's room. a big thing, and no tools are just going to save so many yeah, arguments. Yeah. So anybody can do it. <laughs> so you don't right, have to bring yeah. up a carpenter to come and sort it out. No, nah, exactly. Can, can yeah. you come put this table yeah. together for me? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, and how's the economy treating you now? I mean, now um, the um, uh, job keeper's is finished. Mm -hmm. So what do you think about that? Look, uh, we've been we've been fortunate that we came up with this idea very quickly. <laughs> hey, buddy. <laughs> we've been. We were fortunate we came up with this idea quickly, and so we, we, we never actually had to get JobKeeper. Um, and so for us, everyone being at home has actually been a great help for us over the last year. I think we did have somewhat unnatural growth early on, um, but, uh, but it's, it's sort of levelling out now and we're, we're on the way back up. And how do you feel? feel I feel Mick. great. I feel great. How do you feel, Mick? Very good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Look, we, we do, and, and I think everyone, how does everyone feel? <laughs> it's, it's been a year that none of us were expecting and um, the, the fact that we were able to pull so many people back in and, and have, uh, what, we, we've really got the pick of the entertainment industry come and work for us now and, and we feel great. Yeah, okay, well I, I, I don't know unless anyone else has got any questions, I mean I, I'm probably done. <laughs> but it's a great, it's a great, for me it's a great story, that's why I'm out here, but it's a great story. Um, the evolution of what you've done, the energy with which you've done it, the fact you've been able to keep your, or build your team actually, from mm. where you were. Um, you build equity, brand, intellectual property. Um, you've turned a disaster into two businesses. What's great is new, your old business is going to come back. Yeah. It's coming back. It's coming back. We'll come yeah. back with a vengeance. Yeah. Um, I'm seeing in my businesses, anything that was doing it tough is now actually sort of getting demand double what it was pre-COVID. Mm. Because it seems like everybody wants to indulge themselves. I don't mm. know what's happening. There's mm. an indulgence binge on at the moment. Um, and, you know, one of the things people binge on is furniture. So I think you've done a great thing. It was a, a brilliant pivot. It was great execution. Um, you're one of my better podcasts. I've done 300 podcasts. Um, your <laughs> podcast is one of my better ones. Oh, thanks. Um, so I, and I'm, I was, that's why I came out. I was happy to help you. And um, I'm actually proud to see, you know, what you've done and your progress and pretty cool to meet your family too yeah. well. so good and, <laughs> I your, appreciate the, it. and your broader family too yeah thanks so much for coming out mark you're welcome appreciate it and any questions yeah no pay rise questions <laughs> sorry joe support we've we've been donating ten dollars from every desk from the start as you know and uh we've, we've raised ninety thousand dollars on our good as job. of our anniversary so wow. We're pretty happy with that. That's a question for you, Mark. Actually, how many, how many business owners do you know at the start of COVID who one of their first thoughts was, let's give something back to somebody else? Not many. We're still trying to stay alive ourselves. Well, this is probably the only one <laughs> that I know of. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's a big deal. Yeah. Especially when, you know, like in the beginning of a business, you're mostly investing. You're not making. You're not taking much money out of it. Yeah. So if you're giving money away at the same time, there's always the temptation to say, "Oh, I need we'll, that money." We'll hold back this month. <laughs> yeah. There's always a temptation, but mm. that's cool. Very cool. You would have met tons of entrepreneurs in your time. How does Jeremy compare? What, when you when <laughs> you met him, you would have heard a little, tiny little bit about his story. Well, I, 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 we, we all think is exceptional, but. To, how well, well I, I met him uh, just in the middle of it, so he'd only really mm. had the stand-up desk. It was May, I think. Oh, yeah, it was pretty close oh, yeah, to the, the period. And mm. uh, we, we were doing a series on people who, who had pivoted. Um, and I'll be honest with you, um, 
I had no idea who the, the I, d I had no idea what the business was that Stage Kings was uh, prior to that. I, I, mm. Because I, generally speaking, walk into my podcast and I look at my, the brief two minutes before they walk in. Because <laughs> that's, that's yeah. a small part of my life, my business life I'm talking about. So I, I race in there on a Wednesday morning, 8 a.m. and well, 5 to 8, 10 to 8, sometimes I'm late. And uh, I read it and I go, okay, because I do that for a reason though. There's a whole lot of reasons I do it. One, I'm busy. But the other reason I do it is because I want to learn about him during yeah, the enough. discussion. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't want to have it all in my head mm. because it becomes a bit, um, it's not a great conversation. Mm. So I want to know, that, feel like I just met him at the pub mm. in a bar and he's telling me about his business, which means I can ask questions which I, like not obvious questions, just questions that flow from the conversation. And when I was talking to him, I thought, what is this stage kings? What is it? What the hell's it do? I say king, what the hell? And uh, furniture, I thought, oh my God, what, how, that's not, it's not a great sort of, Start up, you know. <laughs> how can I make furniture sexy and interesting? <laughs> and uh, but as we got in the conversation, um, his energy is quite good. And uh, it, it, my podcast is about the end. I, the energy of the podcast is as good as the energy of the person I'm speaking to. And if I'm getting good enthusiasm and that energy from them, um, and new fresh ideas, and also he was skating on thin ice too, you know, like. Uh, you know, that, that, that's important to me. Yeah. I, I can feel there's a bit of edginess there because you think, fuck, Breaking I could easily go straight down here, you know, like this could be the end. <laughs> and uh, that's all cool stuff. It's, and that's why one of the reason, another reason I'm here. Like I've now gone through that cycle and see where he's landed. Mm. Or everyone's landed, you're all landed. So yeah, so in, I, you know, I'm not going to rate him, but you know, he's an interesting character and the business has an interesting character and meeting people out here is sort of, an, uh, for me, is a reflection of, the, of him. So to, to a large extent, to be honest with you. Like, uh, I see lots of smiles and everybody really happy and I can see a whole lot of people proud of what they have done and what they've achieved. Um, so, and I'm not surprised. Well done, mate. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so take, I mean, I, I really, I actually love the sideboard, whatever you call that thing there. That, the bookcase. The bookcase, yeah. Tell me, take me through that. So the whole, when we decided to do a, a, a home furniture range, the idea was to create more permanent sort of solid furniture. Everything we've done before with the desks and monitor stands and all of the office work from home stuff was intentionally collapsible. So that if you lived in a small apartment, you could pack it up to put it away. Uh, the idea behind this furniture is you build it and then you don't pull it apart until you move. Uh, and so the challenge was to create like modern stylish furniture that didn't look like it was like a slot together. Uh, so the challenge with that was curves. So I think that was the solution. Was to, well, curves is the solution, was it? Yeah, yeah, to build curves into everything. And so <coughs> in order to get the curves, we, yeah, we came up with this whole slap feature. Uh, and it started with the TV unit. Well, and uh, that was well received. So then it was just sort of, um, just grew throughout the entire range. Uh, the bookcase was an early one. And it came from our pegboard. So we had a, a pegboard yep. room partition. Um, but again, it needs to be very modular, very adaptable to different people's needs. Um, and also provide a few different little features that you, know, you might not find in other products that are on the market. So we've got the pegboard shelves that sit in the pegboard. We've got the little cantilevered shelves that can on the side, either yeah. come on the side or you can put them on the inside. Um, we've got slots uh, at every 200 mil, so you can you know, put a range of shelves to, to suit however you want to do it. Um, the little dividers down the bottom I thought could be good sort of bookends to hold, hold books up. So what do you do at night? Do you just sort of sit there thinking <laughs> about, you know, you know what, I could put that little divider there and I could put that little uh, cantilever shelf on the side there? You sort of, it's all... How do you think? I think through the drawing, through yeah. the CAD program. Um, you start with an idea, like a, a ponder, a yeah. ponder for a good Do you be, do any non-CAD, in other words, by hand? Not really, no. only when I'm trying to explain ideas. Right. Um, but a lot of the time, I sort of just think... But how does it start? Yeah, I think about the form, like uh, what the shape is going to be. And ponder, I ponder for longer than I let on. And then, uh, <laughs> and then I start, I generally just draw a block of the shape. And then from that, the, you, then the detail starts. Then you, then you have to, you've got the form, so then you have to pull it apart and then, 
the whole flat pack slot together uh, mechanisms just sort of yeah come together. When you were a kid, did you have a Lego set? I had Lego. <laughs> I had Meccano. And Meccano. Wow, yeah. you go back away. Well, I Meccano. had my dad's Meccano. Meccano came yeah. before Lego. Yeah. Um, I had a Meccano set, so um, and uh, but the Lego set. And when you had the Lego set, were you the sort of kid that would sit around making things for a really long time, like really put the time and effort into it? Yeah, I did a lot of play with Lego. Yeah. I, I currently do a lot of play with my, my sons. Still with Lego, yeah, yeah. yeah. Lego. Cool, you never lose your, the boyness, boyishness in it. And would it be fair to say that um, if I put Jeremy there and Mick there, you, you there and him there, that it would be best described as that he cuts and you sew? <laughs> I've never thought about it like that. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because so we, we you, cause you need a person yeah. who's good at this stuff. Yeah. You have to sew, but you also need a person who cuts, yeah, yeah. cuts in terms of business I'm talking about, cuts yeah. the business. Yeah. Let's do this, let's do that. But then you've got to have someone follow them up all the time, sewing and, and making sure it's finished. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's Mick and Tab. Okay, <laughs> the two of them. Yeah. Well, you do need that sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes you, I do a lot of cutting. Well, if you, I was going to say, if, if you're the sort of person who goes at a pace in yeah. cutting, you do need two sewers behind you. And, mm. and in making suits, that actually happens. People mm -hmm. who make garments, you get some unbelievable cutters who know how to cut the shape of the garment, but they, they have to have a whole lot of people sewing, lots of people sewing behind mm. to catch it, keep up with them. So in business, you see that a lot. Mm. In successful businesses, you see that a lot. Mm -hmm. Mm. Yeah, yeah. You need someone who cuts, but you must have someone who cuts. But you also must have someone who sews, yeah. and they've got to work together. They've got to be able to read each other's mind. Mm. So pretty much, you and Tabitha need to know what he's what he's actually thinking about when he's cutting, because he's not literally cutting. But <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah, that's cool. Very cool. Yeah. Any questions? Dragon, <laughs> dragon supporter. Yeah. Well, that's not going to help the dragons this year. <laughs> <laughs> We'll do better than most people think. Yeah, I hope you're right. <laughs> well, they've never recovered since Wayne Bennett left. He completely stuffed them, like he does everybody. <laughs> and he's going to do it to South with a bit of luck. Because <laughs> I'm a Rooster supporter, so I hope he does it. <laughs> uh, perfect. All right, well, Mark, we just wanted to say thank you very much for coming down. And so we thought we'd get you your, your very well, own... Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Thanks Mark.